Hello everyone and welcome back to Bistro Days. Hopefully this is the last uh, part. And uh, yeah, I think this is where we end off. Uh, whoopsie days is if it isn't, but yeah. Rose gathers us together after the customers are all gone. That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, I knew a teenager would kick Iris' butt at karaoke. Hey! Ow, that's loud. Why is that loud? Whatever. Ahem. Hey, I let them win, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you should do these more often. It was nice getting to know our customers better. What do you think, Iris? On the same page as Lilikins, it wasn't too bad. Finn? You're a customer, so your opinion about everything matters the most. How did you feel about the event? Uh, I felt a strong sense of community. Everyone was enjoying themselves. We were all one big family for the day. Makes me happy to hear you say that. That was one of the tonight's goals. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, Finn. We'll probably be doing more of these, but change things up here and there to keep things new and refreshing. We're sending out surveys to those who were here tonight. The feedback on that will help us plan for the future. Yeah, and it'll give us ideas for our flower festival booth. Our flower festival booth. That reminds me, I came up with an idea for our booth's theme earlier. Oh? Ooh, ooh, what is it? Home. Tonight really brought me back to the days of my youth. As I took in tonight's atmosphere, I was brought back to the family gatherings I had at home as a kid. A homey theme is fun. Yeah, we can make our booth feel cozy like a family home. I'm relieved you're so warm to the idea, as abstract as it is at the moment. Abstract blabstract. That's what concept and design at work is for, baby. A cozy home theme sets us apart from the other booths. We'll likely go for minimalistic looks. That settles it then. We'll have a home themed booth at the Wisteria Flower Festival and take our inspiration from tonight's successful event. Sound good to everyone? Yeah! <laughs> I expect everyone to come into our meeting this weekend with great ideas. We need to pick out what dish we'll be entering into the cookout or cooking extravaganza too. I hope you haven't forgotten about that. Rose turns an unexpected gaze to us. We all look away innocently, rubbing the back of our heads. Uh, about that. <laughs> uh. Goodness, what would you guys do without me? Take this as a gentle reminder that we signed up for the cooking extravaganza and we'll be presenting one of our dishes to the judges. A winning dish will bring us a lot of publicity and boost our reputation. There's a lot at stake, so we need to come up with an inventive but tasty dish ASAP. Got it? Got it! I have high expectations, so don't disappoint me. I want three dish ideas from each of you by the weekend. No less than three, no more than ten. Okay, Iris? Roger that. Now that it's all taken care of, it's time to clean up and close up. Finn, you don't need to stick around for this. Feel free to head home. Are you sure? <laughs> Leave it to us. Get some rest. This is our job, so don't try to deal in it. Okay. Thanks for inviting me again. Of course. Thank you for showing up. Get home safe, Finn. Bye, guys. Bye! Thank them again for everything, then head out. That was more fun than I expected. I review my instant blog about the event, and then save it to my drafts to post in the morning. So I need to li I need a list of potential cooking extravaganza dishes by the weekend. Maybe I should visit mom tomorrow and ask her for her input. She knows a lot about food. I replayed the evening in my mind. My thoughts keep coming back to Rose and how hard she worked to make everyone feel at home tonight. Making others happy is one of the best gifts a person can have. I agree, actually. I've never been the most outgoing guy. So I always has outshined me, so I've lived in his shadow all my life. I've never been enough for mom or anyone else, but it's time that changed. If I try hard enough, I can become any kind of person I want to be. Maybe I can become someone as outstanding as Rose one day. Click, click, dot, dot, dot. I'm exhausted. Time to sleep. Okay, great. I shut my eyes at long last, allowing the darkness to whisk me away. I wake my, I, I, I make my way over to my mom's house in the morning. To my absolute displeasure, Cyrus is, Cyprus is, uh, Cyrus from Team Galactic, yes, of course. Um, Cyprus is the first person I encounter there. Huh. Well, if it isn't Finn, I didn't expect to see you here. I don't remember what I 
voice I gave him. This was like the first episode, and that was like a year ago. Not really, but might as well have been. Likewise, you know, I'm still surprised you came to came to me for help with your avian affliction. You never asked me for anything. Anyway, I've got just the thing for you. It's an advanced bird feeder my fiance and I have been working on. A bird feeder? We're trying to get rid of the pigeons, not attract more. You didn't let me finish. It's a feeder that emits certain sounds that attract birds. Naturally, using those sounds, you can also lure them away from places. <laughs> Don't give me that look, it really works. We're in the process of patenting this revolutionary technology, so consider yourself lucky for being the first person to use it. If it explodes on me, you'll be the first person I sue. Have a little faith. If I say it works, it works. I'll drop it off at your place later today. Alright. Oh! Finn? I thought I heard your voice. Here to pay m your mom a visit? I nod. Sai turns to me. I was about to head out, so I guess you'll be the one to take mom out for Aaron's little bro. Oh, yeah. Ta-ta! Okay, he has a fancier accent. I thought he was gonna be like, kind of a douchebaggy guy. But, I mean, nah. Whatever. Both are kind of douchebaggy. <laughs> uh, Cypress leaves the dramatic flourish. Let's head out to Finn. There's a lot I need to do today. Alright, let's go. Mom and I run around town for a couple hours and then return to the house. Sometime later. Okay, the groceries are in the fridge. I should probably go now. Aren't you staying for lunch? I have some food back at home. This is your home. You may have moved out, but you still grew up here. Stay for lunch. I know you're planning on eating stale leftovers anyway. Or are you saying you're fine with missing out on your mother's delicious food? Fine. You got me, Mom. <laughs> I sit back down at the kitchen table. Unable to fight back, I miss her homemade meals. Aside from the sound of her cooking, there's a peaceful silence. My attention drifts around the kitchen, nearby living room. Everything's the same as it was when I was younger, except it all looks a little smaller and worn from age. Mom's gotten older, too. She has a slight hunch now, and her gray hair is starting to peek out. The fact that she's aging weighs heavily on my chest. What are you making? Beef stew. I used to cook it for you and your brother all the time, remember? Yeah, that was Dad's favorite. <laughs> it was. Before Dad got sick, he and Mom were always in the kitchen together. Once Mom took over the cooking, he sat over there on the porch the newspaper and a cup of hot herbal tea. I always complained about how bad his tea smelled. I didn't know he needed it for his condition. I never get to, did get to properly apologize to him about that. I glance over at the vacant porch, my chest twinging. Twinging? I don't know. Don't care. Mom follows my line of sight, reminiscing of days long gone. I suddenly miss him so much that it hurts. Why didn't you tell me Dad was sick? Mom continues to cook, not missing a single beat. It's like she knew I was going to ask. You are too young. You wouldn't have understood. But you told Sai. He was mature enough to understand. I wasn't. If I knew Dad was sick, I would have spent more time with him. I would have helped out more and done better in school. I didn't even get a chance to make him proud of me. He's your father, Finn. He was always proud of you. I wish you were, too. Mm. Mom stops chopping the vegetables and a heavy silence falls over the house. Listen, Finn. I know I can be harsh sometimes, but I only want what's best for you. Just like your father did. I just want you to have more faith in me. I do have faith in you. No, you don't. If you did, you'd support my dreams of being a food blogger. I know Dad would Hey! Finn. Forget I said anything. Yikes. The mood sours after that, but I don't have it in my heart to leave. After lunch is over, I help her with dishes, then get ready to head out. Visit again when you get the chance, okay? A pang of guilt hits my chest. I will. Bye, Mom. Bye. Ooh, pretty scenery. I leave the house cutting across the nearby park. Well, there goes my plans on asking her for the ideas for the cooking extravaganza. I need to clear my head. Of course you go here. I somehow always find myself coming back here. I'm pretty sure that line was said in a previous chapter. Just as I approach the entrance, Coco! I made it sound like a Pokemon. I get assaulted by a flock of pigeons. I frantically wave my arms, shielding myself as the birds mob me. Get away! Leave me alone! They finally fly away, seeming to realize I don't have food. The bell chimes over as I head as I enter the bistro. Lily beams cheerfully, not seeming to have witnessed the ordeal that I just went through. Hi! Hello and welcome to Bellflower Bistro. How can I help you? A table for one, please. 
She leads me to a table and offers me a menu. What drink can I get? What uh, blows can I start you off with, Finn? What should I order? Uh, iced tea, please. Ooh, refreshing. It's one of Rose's favorites. <laughs> I'll get that for you in a sec. Thanks, Lily. I cast my gaze at out the window, brooding over what happened with my mom. Maybe I was too harsh with her. Maybe just a little. Hello. Finn. Here's your iced tea. Have I ever told you how much I loved iced tea? It's delicious and refreshing, perfect for any weather. She sets my drink in front of me. Is everything all right? You don't look like yourself. I'm all right. If you insist. I'm here if you needed someone to air your grievances to. It's fine. Hmm. Grab your drink and come with me, Finn. Huh? But I... She pulls me out of the bistro before I could protest any further. We'll be right back, Lily. Have fun. Rhodes leads me to the park. We settle down on a bench together. The weather's nice today. It's a little cloudy and cold, but it's comfy. It makes me want to sit by the fireplace with a mug of hot chocolate and watch the rain or snow outside the window. You like cold weather, huh? Rose nods. I spent a lot of winters with my grandparents in the countryside. If Grandpa was feeling generous, he'd lend my father and I his fishing pole, and we'd trek out to the frozen lake to ice fish and talk for hours. Hmm. Life was simpler back then. I like to go back to those innocent days. Me too. I'd do anything to spend more time with my dad. I wish my mom told me the truth about his condition. She kept it from me until it was too late. I know it was to protect me, but I have so many regrets because of what she did. That doesn't change the fact that she still hurt your feelings. Yeah, you're right. I wish she'd been honest with me. Hearing you talk about your mother reminds me of my father. We didn't always get along. Really? Yes, we grew distant as I got older and developed my own beliefs and personality. <sighs> One misunderstanding led to another, and soon enough, we were fighting about the most ridiculous things. Despite a smile on Rose's face, I could feel the sadness encasing her words. I thought he was being controlling because I was becoming my own person. On the other hand, he saw me becoming a rebellious teenager. But things are never purely black or white. I didn't realize that it until it was almost too late. Rose pauses to gather herself before continuing. It felt like everything was falling apart. I wanted to escape it all, so I packed what I could into a backpack and ran away. It was raining that day, so I got drenched on the way to the bus stop. I was about to board the bus when I heard my father shouting my name. He'd run all the way from home when he realized I was gone and wasn't even wearing a coat or shoes. My father never been the type to show anyone his tears, but he was crying, begging me to come home. Oh, that's really sad. <laughs> so I did, and when I got there, I found my younger siblings crying in the living room. They thought they'd lost me. After I apologized to them, my father and I had a good, long talk. Had we been open and honest with each other from the start, things never would have reached the point they did. Do you regret it in a way? No. If I hadn't, my father and I would never have- wait. Would my father and I have come to understand each other like we do now? That's a good point. My father and I have made amends over the years and are closer than ever. I'd, uh, I actually skipped some. I'd like the same for you and your mother. I do too. I'll talk to her when I get the chance. Thanks for the advice and sharing your story with me, Rose. I'm glad I got to know you better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy I got to know you better too. I suddenly feel a sting against my cheek. Huh? There's another sting, this time on my arm. Rain is soon falling from the sky. Oh boy. Finn, over here! Rose leads me to a nearby gazebo. Phew, that was close. Rose pulls me close as she watches the rain. Ugh. The proximity of Roddy's makes my heart race. Rose has always been pretty, but she's even prettier up close. Seeing my ling sensing my lingering gaze, Rose meets my eyes. Uh, oh! I, I didn't realize I was holding on to you. I apologize if I made you uncomfortable. N not, not at all. I figured those incoming clouds meant rain was on the way. We were so busy talking that we didn't notice the sky getting dark. Rose casts her gaze up at the stormy sky and smiles peacefully. I'll follow her line of sight trying to discover the same sense of solace. It doesn't take long for me to find it too. We it until the rain subsides. Goodness, would you look at the time? Sorry, Finn, I'd love to stay with you for a while longer, but I have Bistro to run. Good luck with work, Rose. 
See ya. Thank you. Take care, Finn. You too. Oh, and you should take... Rose hurries up before I can finish. Just cut back. I look down at the half-finished cup of iced tea in my hands. I'll return it to the bistro next time I'm there. I take one last look at the sky before heading home. Okay, great. Chapter 7, Blossoming Friendship. Home at last. Thankfully, I made it back before it started raining again. I sit at my desk watching the rain patter against the window. I feel better after talking to Rose about everything. I wasn't expecting her to open up about her own life and experiences, but I'm glad she did. Rose never stuck me as the type who'd run away from home, but that shows there's a little I really don't know about her. Or wait, did I read that right? But that shows there's a little I really know about her. Shows that there's little. Okay, I'm really bad at reading. Sorry. Very sorry, my friendings. Hopefully, we on we'll only get close from now on. Later that evening. Several hours later, I collapsed tiredly onto my bed. Spent from all the laundry, dishes, and cleaning. Whew, I'm beat. I'm going to pass, uh, po post a photo of the iced tea I had earlier before I call it a day. I log in and find new comments on my post about the bistro's dev at night. Follow for follow. Check out my page. You'll like what you see. XO. Hot babe 88. <laughs> yeah, that's the reality of things. <sighs> I delete the spam comments. Hey, normal comment. Food looks delicious. Loving your posts. I'm getting good traction with my account. Soul and Seti. I've got to keep this up. Yeah, I can relate to the spam comments. If you're a YouTuber with at least like a thousand or more subs, you'll, you'll, you'll know. Spam comments are so dumb. I, I've had to deal with my fair share of those, like, bot comments that are like, go to this link for, I don't know, I, I have links turned off, so I wouldn't be that, it would, it's like the ones where there's like a little timestamp and like, something like, you're so hot or something, I don't know, it's really weird, I don't understand those bot comments, but they've showed up a lot in the past two years. Anyways, I'm getting, uh, oh yeah, right, right, that. So I surf through and snap until my eyelids grow heavy. Alright, that's enough for tonight. Time to rest. The sound of rain pounding against my... I don't see no rain. Lulls me into a much needed slumber. Good night, world. Good night, cruel world. Da da da. Finn. Finn, wake up! Your apartment's on fire! What? Emergency! Open your eye! Wait, really? I fly out of bed expecting to find myself surrounded with plumes of fire and smoke. However, there's no disaster to be found. I... S Save for the grinning man standing over me. Gah! Pfft. That's no way to greet you, big bro. How did you get in here? You left your door unlocked, so I left my... Uh, did, I, did I give him this one? You left your door unlocked, so I let myself in. Sounds like something I do. I'm here to drop off the miracle bird feeder. He tosses what looks like a mixture of lamp and wood, wooden wind chimes at me. It abides with the Wisteria City regulation, so you have no problem with it. In case the cops give you any trouble, here's a permit. Um, thanks? How do I use this gizmo? Turn this dial to switch it on and to adjust the intensity of the emissions. Don't turn it too high or you'll be attracting a huge flock of birds. If I were you, I'd turn it on by the bistro to get the attention of the pigeons, then lead them to the park. Hang this baby up on a tree and keep it on a low or medium, f keep it on low or medium for a few days. With an ample supply of food at the park, the pigeons should want to settle down there instead of returning to the bistro. I'd rather have them settle down further away from the bistro. Birds are less likely to follow you over large distance. Besides, you don't think you want to parade. I don't think you want to parade around town with a bunch of pigeons chasing you. You got a point. Well, I'll let you get back to sleep now. Call me if you need anything. Well, sell ya. Ta ta, little bro. As soon as he's gone, I bolt the door and bat fall back into bed. <sighs> now back to sleep. Oh boy, my phone buzzes, rousing me from sleep the next morning. Who in the world could be texting me at this ungodly hour? It's a newly formed chat between me, Iris, and Lily. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, isn't anyone replying to me? Take a look at the time. That should answer your question. Not even that early. Good meowing, everyone. Lilikins, the time has come. Let's welcome Finn to our coven. Coven? Here, we witches brew potions, turn people into frogs, and curse wretched souls to eternal damnation. And we plan parties. Big fun parties. We need your help, Finn. Rose's big day is coming. We need to plan for it. Birthday? Her birthday? Don't do this. Her death day, aka the... Oh my gosh. There's so many texts. Oh, can I read? <laughs> Please, maest. 
Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold, oh my. Okay, let me read. Unknown uh, was her death day, aka the day she sold her soul to the Bethlehem Bistro. It's her work anniversary. Lily and I were. It's her work anniversary. Lily and I were gonna handle the party plans alone, but we're busy girls, so unfortunately we need your help. Rose doesn't like being the center of attention, so we've never had a chance to throw a party. But this year, we want to go all out, and we want to, you to make that happen. So what do you say? You want to be our designated party planner? Uh, sign me up. Yeah, I don't know why I would choose anything else. Ah, I'm so relieved you're okay with this. Of course I am. Throwing a little celebration for her wouldn't hurt. In fact, I think she'd love it. Yup. So she acts like she doesn't want love, but she so does. That was just modesty. <laughs> Even more reason to surprise her with a party in honor. How can I help? Uh, close chat. I spend the next half hour on a phone call with them. As you can see, we're expecting a lot from you. I can see that. I have a whole list here of things to consider. I'll do my best to plan a work anniversary party Rose will never forget. You better. We're counting on you. Don't your expectations too high. Oh, the call ended. On top of the flower festival preparation, managing my Snap page, dealing with the pigeon problem, and making up with my mom, I now have Rose's work anniversary party to plan. Okay, great. Thinking about all my tasks isn't going to get them done. I better get cracking. I up. I make my way over the bistro, pigeon device in one hand and cup in the other. While sweeping the entrance, the majority of the pile she swept up containing pigeon feathers and debris from their nest. Though the pigeons hidden under an awning glare at me, they don't seem to mind Lily. Hi! How like her she feeds them. Good morning, Finn. Morning, Lily. What do you have there? For one, the cup from the iced tea I had yesterday. And secondly, a special device that'll help you with the pigeon problem you have. Ooh, how does it work? It doesn't, like, zap them until their feathers fall off, does it? No, it's actually a cruelty-free device approved by the city. I tell her what I know about how it works. Wow, cool. It sounds good to me as long as none of them, the pigeons get hurt. Yep, is Rose here? Mm-hmm. I was just about to head in, so I'll tell her you're there. You're here. I'll return the cup you brought while I'm at it. Thanks, Lily. <laughs> she gives some response and skips into the bistro. Shortly afterwards, Rose comes out. Hello. Morning, Finn. I heard you got our pitcher mover with you. Hope it works. We won't know until we try. Let's do this before we open. I turn on the dial. God, that was an annoying noise. I turn the dial on the device. It comes to life immediately piquing the interest of the hungry pigeons. Dozens of beady eyes lock onto me at the same time. Oh, there they go. Go, 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 go. As if controlled by a hive mind, the pigeons launch off and make a beeline towards me all at once. Finn, watch out. She's a moment too late. Before I know I'm surrounded by a cloud of fluttering feathers, snapping beaks, and sharp talons. Ah, well. Finn, hang in there. If I don't do something, these birds are going to tear me at shreds. I bolt to the park. Wait up. People stop by to take pictures and videos of the spectacle as I run by. Gotta find somewhere to set this down. There! I hang the bird feeder on a tree and then step back. The pigeons crowd around the device and eagerly feed on the seeds attached to the device. I somehow made it through it unscathed. I snap a photo of the pigeon feeding frenzy and shoot it over to Cyprus. Wow! What an advanced bird feeder. Technology's come very far in society. Do we just leave it there? Yeah, we're supposed to leave it on lower medium emissions for a few days. The pigeons will ideally associate this area with food and decide to settle down at the park. In the worst case scenario, they return to the bistro and we repeat the process until they stop. <laughs> Sounds like a good strategy to me. I have to say, I never imagined the day would come where I'd see you getting chased by a flock of hungry pigeons. <laughs> I hope it was entertaining to you. She nods. Looks like a pigeon problem is solved for now. To be honest, I wasn't sure if I should involve you in this matter at all, but I'm glad I did. If there's anything else I can help you with, I'd be more than willing to take it on. Even if it's something small like taking out the trash. Why? What do you mean, why? Why are you so thoughtful? You're not obligated to help me with anything, Finn. I want to, though. You work so hard and handle everything on your own. It makes me feel like I should be doing more to help. Hmm. I see. I tend to get so absorbed in my work and thoughts that I sometimes forget to consider the feelings of those around me. I didn't realize that my habits could make you feel the way you do. Your concern makes me quite happy. If you're happy, then so am I. Rose smiles weakly. At the same time, I can't help but feel guilty. The last thing I want is to burden those around me. I don't want you to feel like you need to do anything at all for me, regardless if I ask you or not. I can deal with everything on my own. What should I say? Not that one. You don't have to. 
You don't have to. It wouldn't hurt to rely on others from time to time. I, I suppose not, but accepting help isn't something I'm used to. I've had a lot of responsibilities since I was young, and they were nobody's but my own to bear. Somehow I've gotten into the habit of dealing with everything alone. It's never too late to change your ways. Yes, it would be nice if I could learn to outgrow this mindset. Rose gets quiet. It doesn't seem like she wants to talk about this anymore. I should get back to the bistro. Thanks again for your help, Finn. Have a good day. You too. Rose smiles wryly, then returns the way we came. I watch her go, conflicting feelings stewing inside me. How long have I been recording? Okay, I'll stop it after this. I can see working on my Instant page when I get... What the... Okay. It actually hit my mouse wheel. Uh, I, on my Instant page when I get home. These days and times are the best for optimal social media engagement. If I schedule a post on that day, I'll have a better shot at gaining audience. Wait. These days and times... Oh. It's, it's the weekend, so yeah. If I schedule uh, I'll have a better shot at gaining an audience. I stick notes on my calendar. If I block off time in my schedule to write, this might be more productive. I need to get, dedicate time to brainstorming for the Wisteria Flower Festival, too. I feel like I accomplished a lot by planning out a schedule. This is how Rose spends her time. I grab my phone wondering how she's uh, faring after that talk earlier. Hey Rose, how's work going? Hi Finn, business slow today, but it's getting better. Compiling and analyzing the results of the survey we sent out regarding the event night we hosted. There are much more of responses than I anticipated. Typing, typing, typing. Some assistance would be appreciated. I have a few calls to make and I'd rather devote my time to those instead. How can I help? Rose calls me a few moments later. Judging from the faint sound of chatter in the background, she's in her office at Hello. the beach. Nope. Hi, Rose. Sorry, events for all the information I'm about to dump on you. You might want to grab a pen and paper. And once you finish creating a chart of the data, please send it to my email. Sounds good to me. When do you need this done? Preferably tonight. Tonight? I can't believe you were originally planning on doing this all on your own. <laughs> I'll get I'll I'll get it all to you before midnight. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Thank you, Finn. I don't know what I'd do without you. She mumbles the last bit before hanging up. Rose is counting me. I better get started if I want to finish by tonight. Before I know it, the sun is already setting. I'm only halfway through the results. I consider giving up, but all I can think of is Rose's relieved smile when she finds out I finished. Ah! Let me click on something. I can't give up now. I got to finish. I got to keep going. I did it. I actually finished. Rose should be getting off of work around this time. She. She needs to know the good news. Sure enough, Rose picks up the phone after only two rings. Hey Finn, how are you holding up? I finished. You what? I finished everything you asked for. It should be in your email inbox any moment now. Thanks Finn, that was fast. You worked hard today, so get some rest. You too. Good night. Night. I can't help but smile to myself as I set my phone down. No I could use just one of the, her burdens bring me immense joy. Thanks for trusting me, Rose. I hope you sleep better tonight. I still need to set up the time to interview her for my snap posts. I'll come up with a list of topics and questions to run by her for the next time we see each other. I spend the rest of the evening working on my snap page, fall tiredly onto the bed and stare up at the ceiling. The conversation I had with Rose earlier today replays in my mind. One thing's for sure, I care about Rose and I want her to be happy. I'm going to do my best to plan a work anniversary party she'll never forget. Okay. Well. Uh, this is where I'll be ending the episode, so, thank you all for, uh, watching, if you liked the video, then make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, oh, thank goodness, and yes, I will see you in the next one, Bye bye